All right. Um, last time that we were here, um, we, you know, we took last week off for birthdays and such. Um, we, uh, your party had just uh, slayed a giant and a couple of uh, a trio of ogres um, who had uh, who were holding hostage, basically, or had captured a couple of, a couple of commoners. Um, from the, the Helix area, and they had a big cart. They had a pair of donkeys. They only have one now. And uh, the, yeah, and that, that's kind of where you left off. And you guys had basically taken a, a, a secret underground path to, um, from Bogtown to Helix. Uh, that got you, you know, a good chunk of the way there. So, um... Before we begin, any questions, concerns, anything that we need to, any, uh, you know, bookkeeping, as they say? Mm, All right. Cool. Not particularly, no. Then I will take us back to our page that we were on. I believe it was this one. Yep. And there we are. So you guys are basically, um, you know, you're, you're kind of wrapping everything up. You know, going through your your piles and piles of of loot and uh, and things like that, um, and you got a couple tied up people that you had uh, managed to kind of escort at least a little bit out of there. Um, and what are you doing at this point? Uh, I'm gonna untie the people. I say. Okay. So they seem to be very appreciative of uh, being untied. So. The so the one of the um, the people that's tied up is a rather attractive woman who appears to be kind of in a barmaid's outfit. Um, she um, you know she's got uh, what should I call it? She's got red hair and she's quite pretty um and she is uh there as well and the other person uh that you see is uh someone it's another female that's basically wearing a like a cloak um and she seems to have some religious vestments on so they both saw me get decked by a donkey I'm guessing, right? <laughs> uh, that that would be correct. It was it literally the donkey landed like right in front of them. Uh, are you both all right? Um, I I assume not with uh, your donkey uh, here. Neither appear to be uh, Elvin, do they? Uh, no, no, they do not. Neither appears to be Elvin. I'm and kind of dragging their portraits onto the, the page. Also, is she is she a cleric? Which one? The uh, the one with the uh, uh, whole. You said a holy symbol, right? Yes, yeah, she's got a. She appears to have religious vestments on. Ah. And um, what is it? You can ask her, but uh, the the redhead girl kind of look. Uh, you know, kind of. She's rubbing her wrist basically where she was tied up. And uh, she's like, thank you. Um, don't know how to repay you. Uh, yeah, we just went out for kind of like a midnight stroll. And um, these guys kind of came along and kind of kind of captured us. So what are you guys' names? And they're looking around. They're a little. They look a little concerned. I'm talking. They're they're happy that they got rescued, but you know, they are um, surrounded by a bunch of what appear to be kind of ruffians. Um, so they're 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 a little side eyed. They're like, she looks at because uh, you're the closest to her. She looks at you, Horace, and she's like, so so we're cool. Uh yeah. I mean, I don't know why we wouldn't be. Uh. Are you guys? Are you sure you guys are all right? Uh, yeah, I'm talking. They were planning on eating us, but <laughs> you know, they were finishing the donkeys first. I guess they were saving us for dessert. 
That that's unappetizing. Um, is is this your uh, donkey in your cart? It's not ours. Oh. <laughs> uh, would you like a would you like a ride back to Helix then with our new donkey and cart? <laughs> <laughs> that would be fine. I don't know if that donkey's going to be able to pull it alone, but uh, you know. We can, yeah, we can that's, try. that's definitely going to be a problem. We're, we're more than willing to walk beside the cart so that the donkey doesn't have any more weight because that's a lot of that's a lot of gold that you have in there. Uh, yeah. Um, has these, uh, these guys have been raiding for quite a while. They they've been hitting up all the different you know parties that are coming in and out of Helix. Well, it's a good thing we stopped them then. Um, do they do they say their names yet, or they haven't said anything? I, they ah. the one woman with the red hair said, "I know Bertrand's brigands. They got hit by these guys. They might have lost one too, but they were coming back with a big haul from uh, from the barrel, and they got hit, and they were really pissed about it that night." Bolo comped him some drinks. <laughs> um, I I almost forgot. Uh, my name is Horace. Horace Sherwood. Your names? Uh, I'm Tacy, and this is my friend Sella. Hmm. And Sella uh... kind of just like nods to you, very you know. Um, Slowly, she's watching yeah. everyone very carefully. Uh, I'm just gonna gesture to the rest of the party and be like, uh, I, you can, in, they can introduce themselves. I think I should probably get this donkey to settle down. You know, the one that just saw the other one get shot. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, I'll, walk and, I'll walk up and try and start talking to him. Okay. So, how'd you guys get captured? Uh, well, just two people walking alone on the road is pretty dangerous. Well, we we both kind of grew up, or you know, I, well, I didn't grow up around here, but I've, I've been here quite a while. So we we thought it was pretty safe. Um, we know these places, you know, pretty well, but they just came out of nowhere and got us. Where, where did they capture you? Uh, I don't know. Once they got us, you know, I don't remember how far we moved or anything like that. How far are we from Helix right now? Uh, we're just we're a few miles. Less south. than a mile, right? Or a mile or two, yeah. You guys are probably a good 30 to 45 minutes walk from there. So, yeah, you're probably somewhere between two and three miles. Huh. She's like, we weren't that far out. We were probably only about a mile out. That's worrisome means that uh, not only bandits, but uh, nefarious creatures are getting bolder in these parts. Yeah, I, especially these guys, as she points down to all the, the dead things. Um, she's like, I think they were getting real brave. Might be to You'd probably be able to see them over the horizon for the city. Can't imagine that uh, Felix is unaware. I don't know. Uh, it, it might we, be due we, to the hobgoblins, do you guys think? Probably not. Well, whatever friends they've brought with them. All sorts of ilk tend to come creeping out of the cracks when law and order break down. Hmm. Yeah, let's so see about we getting this, uh, this wagon yeah. saddled up. We use what daylight we have left to get to town safe yes yeah if this yeah. is like two miles from helix it's pretty easy to get the stuff there Not yeah that. but we're all walking right like we're all walking just so that the donkey can actually pull the wagon yes yeah helping if need be yeah so um whatchamacallit uh d -d 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 um yeah we're, we're taking the two girls with us correct Tacey yeah. and uh, so and uh Tacy, so, yeah. Yeah. The um 
let's see. Heinrich will um, go up to you, Billy, and he'll say, like, I can try to trace their footsteps to see if they're lying about where they got captured. <laughs> oh, certainly. If uh, I... <laughs> If they're from around here and I, uh, three I ogres like and a giant wrong. just kind of stumbled upon them and see them miles off or something, something doesn't smell right, certain. But, uh, well, they were certainly in peril. It's a good thing we rescued them where they were. Um, wouldn't mind taking a look around. <laughs> so Heinrich's like, Yavold. And uh, basically kind of gives you a little salute and then just kind of runs off into the, the swamps. Um, and starts taking a look around. He was a good hireling. Yeah, <laughs> so I feel like he's yeah. going to die. Oh, know. I'm going to put on the, the hanky swanky air, air dwarvens. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've been saving that all day. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> For those that aren't on our Discord, he's talking about the boots of levitation. So Rifon is going to slip on the boots of levitation. Aren't they, a bit, aren't they a bit small for him? Because, you know, a dwarf for them. So They're about I feel the like, a, in my I feel like world, an elf's shoe size is going to be probably smaller than a dwarf's. Yeah. Just proportional. Um, yeah, proportional. Like ankle boots. Yeah. Elves are, um, whatchamacallit, in, at least in classic D&D, elves tend to be a little shorter and lither. They're like... They're like, five, they're like, a, a, like a tall elf is probably somewhere in like the 5'4 five, range. Five, four, five, oh, five, wow. Five. Elves yeah, are not that's exactly what I Oh, wow. Saying. Like, that's not that small, but it, 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 elves are smaller built people. So, so they're, so they're, so they're North Pole elves. Got it. Great. They're not <laughs> North Pole elves. They're, they're, they're not into dentistry. Um, but, <laughs> the, um, but yeah, they're a little shorter and lither. But the, uh, I will say, uh, Rifon, you, 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 decide to kind of perfume them out a little bit and uh, clean <laughs> yeah. them a little bit because the last foot to touch the inside was a dwarf foot. A dead dwarf foot, in fact. Dead. Mm. So, uh, who is going to be driving the cart? No one has to think. We probably just leave the... You can just leave. Oh, okay. So, uh, it'll yeah, take you we get... It takes you guys about a half hour to get everything kind of situated, get the tack and harness on. Um, it's probably going to take one of y'all helping, like literally like pushing with the donkey to try to get this cart going. Uh, not only is the terrain not the best, but I'm talking, it's a lot of weight. Just the gold alone is 1,300 pounds. Like It's a lot of weight for a single donkey. Uh, to be oh uh, god! To be pulling. If it was a if it was a draft horse, like it would it wouldn't be an issue. But, you know, donkeys don't have as much oomph, basically as uh, as they do. But it, it's not a problematic. So you've got very strong dwarves and clerics and stuff like that. So you guys are able to kind of like push it along. Um, so it it takes you close oh. to. Um, uh, whatchamacallit, close to um, darkness to kind of get towards healing. As we're, as we're walking, can I actually uh, ask Stella a few things? You can. Um, can I ask her just like, uh, so what faith do you practice? The one true faith. I see the, uh, I see the uh, religious artifacts. She like... She said, she tells you she's like the one true faith. Uh, Elven gods? Oh, dear. Um, and uh, that is? The, the Lord of Light himself, Saint Yig. Ah. The Keeper of Justice. The Finder of the Ouch. Lost. Ah, I, I don't... I'm not sure why, but I don't think we're going to get along. <laughs> so, from your clerical uh, knowledge and just general knowledge of people, like, St. Yig tends to be, like, the primary deity of, like, the civilized folk in this area. 
Um, uh -huh. he's, he's, he's like the god, the the good god of good gods. Like he is the the atypical kind of truth, justice, and the you know Iron Modian way um, kind, uh, of, kind of deity. So um, while they do a lot of good in the world, they do a lot of um, you know charity work and help and things like that. Um, they also are a little arrogant and a little, a little, you know, all other gods pale in comparison to mine kind of deal. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm gonna say, uh, I, uh, I follow Vulcan. Ask her if the, she's uh, met you, God. The, uh, Forge Father. She's like, yes, the world does need ditch diggers. <laughs> Have you actually met an emissary of your god yet? Listen, now let's not uh, get to measuring rosaries here, friends. I'm uh, sure everyone's god is very nice. I, I just, I just speed along and, and just uh, call back. The silence speaks wonders, dear. She just kind of like looked at you with like a puzzled look, like because that's just a very unusual question. <laughs> uh, our dear friend Horace has recently had a religious awakening and he's making sure everyone knows about it but you understand <laughs> she's like yes often people with um, with lesser faiths try to challenge us but we know that our way is true and just oh, this must be very nice Anyway, so we ought to be coming up on the town shortly. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is absolutely beautiful. I'm sorry, but although if and I were a secret criminal, my best cover would be pissing everybody off by like putting them like, "Hey, do you have time to talk about the good news?" Oh, you don't. You're walking away. Oh, but come back. It's the I'm just uh, saying it's the perfect cover. You will hear Tacy say like. She'll like kind of half whisper, like, Sal, that wasn't very nice. And she's like, What? It's true. She's like, they, they they rescued us. You could be a little gracious. Did your Saint Yig save you? She's like, Yes, he sent them to help us. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> She's like, so in a manner of speaking, yes, I have seen my god's emissaries. It's them. <laughs> well, she's not oh. wrong. <laughs> oh, so, Tasty, Stella, you're from, uh, or you reside in Helix then? Yeah, Tasty's like, yes, very much so. Um, I work at the at Bolo's Bar, um, serving all you, you lovely adventurer types. Um, she puts on a very broad smile. She's like, she's like the treatments, you know. She's like Bolo's nice, but the treatment from all the, you know, adventurers is less than, less than, less than stellar. But the money's good. The curse of tourists the world over. Treat the help like trash, but spend. It. It's uh, she's like, part and parcel, unfortunately. Someday, maybe I'll be able to afford to, uh, to get my own little place and, you know, have my own little bar. And then uh, then Tacy calls the shots. The, the Iron Guardian dream. <laughs> that's, that's the way it goes. <laughs> and then I'll subjugate some serfs. <laughs> then, that's the dream yeah. of everyone, like. <laughs> get pissed on until I can do the pissing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as you guys approach um, Helix, it's a it's kind of a lovely scene. Um, the sun's kind of going down. Um, you can hear a lot of cicadas, basically, as you know the the nighttime is coming up. Some frogs are croaking gently. Um, there's a little Oops, in the water on occasion it's some sort of you know creatures doing a little tussle underneath it as you're you're kind of coming out of the, the swampy area um, into more firm ground because your shoes were sinking in about an inch inch and a half um, as with water basically taking the place as you go 
Um, and you get the silhouette of Helix off in the distance, really framed mostly by the large tower that's there that has the big spyglass or the big uh, telescope kind of coming out of it. And, um, you know, a couple of the other uh, little accoutrements there, all the other little kind of uh, city spots. The only thing that is a little disturbing is that you see smoke coming from uh, the center of the village. Uh, that's a problem. Probably from uh, a celebratory bonfire for our rescuing of the fair maidens and totally uh, not the town on fire. Yeah, uh, what is, what's smoke rising from the town when you guys left? Not that I know of. Uh, we should we should probably get over there quick, like. We've been gone though, probably a day or two. So, how do you guys need food? Cause like, that's a long time to be without food. It's, yeah, you, well, you know, you learn. Tacy looks like she's probably you know lived the rougher side of life. She's probably learned to skip a meal or two. And uh, uh, I'm going to I'm going to hand them each a ration because, you know, I have rations the to clean spare. Ra clean rations or bat wings. <laughs> <laughs> I should have to ask I... this, but I have to ask with you. If anyone else would have said I give her a ration, I would not have had that question. <laughs> uh, iron rations. OK, so they, they'll be thankful for it. Um you also get the idea that Sela basically is probably religiously fasted before, and it's probably not as big a deal for her either. Um, so you guys are, are headed on towards Helix, but with this kind of smoke coming in the air, um, you can smell it as you get kind of maybe like a half to quarter mile out. You can smell the, 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 the smell of... Um, of smoke? That's, yeah, but it's kind of like... Um, almost a mossy smell like a oh, like it's no. the burning of like wet like a wet wood and things like that do you guys do you guys want to leave the cart and want to pick it up no nah, nah, i under no let's circumstances just... want to abandon our cart full of money yeah <laughs> yeah also also uh guys that's probably why that's there's so much smoke you know because uh I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, wet no. materials produce more smoke than dry materials. Maybe they're just having a, a like a, a big party and they're having a bonfire and this is the only wood they found. It's not it's not the random wood on fire. Of it's the like town. the wicker I mean, man but moss. I mean, it's definitely not a building because a building is not wet, most likely. Well, so, on, your, on your guard then, lads, carefully. Yeah. If anything, we can just grab and run. All right. Hold then. as much coins that don't hold, uh, weigh us down, and then just take off. And just sprint out of there. <laughs> Let me see. So, you guys are. Has, uh, has Heinrich looped back around yet, or still off? He's still doing his thing. It takes a little while to. Do some tracking. Where she could track this smoke instead. Docking his pay. Alright. So, as you get closer, um, you actually do hear um, some music being played. Like, okay. A little, no. bit, a little bit of raucous kind of music. Old timey raucous music. Can we understand any of the chatter, like uh, among the crowd per se, or can we only hear the music? So you can, from this distance, you're only, you're starting to hear the music as kind of like you go closer. Mm. Um, and right about that time, I will say that is when um, Heinrich shows back up. Um, he does it pretty surreptitiously, like he's going to. Um, go up to Vance, and basically, like, Vance, you're, like, walking, and then all of a sudden you just feel, like, a hand over your mouth, and someone, like, pull you into the brush. 
<laughs> I like him. Heinrich is a master of stealth. Yeah, wow. When you hey, put this isn't the first time that Vance has been ganked in an alley, so his knife's out. No, <laughs> this isn't an alley, this is the wood. You, you put a ranger <laughs> in the woods and, and like, his natural territory. I'm going with the fact that Heinrich grew up in this area and he knows these swamps. And that's why he's a ranger. Like, he just knows. Yeah, well, if this was a slimy, piss-stained alley in the capital, I'd have you. <laughs> <laughs> but rangers are pretty pretty stealthy, like, when, they, yeah. when they're when they doing, like, stuff in the woods. Like, this is, the back this is what they do. Um, he will look at you and... Uh, <laughs> he'll be like... Shh. He, like, puts his finger up. Shh. He's like, I found some of their gear there. It looks like it had been ransacked a little bit. He's like, but the story doesn't 100% check out. He's like, I found a tent, and there were bedrolls there, and it's definitely them. It smells like them. Uh-huh. How, how, did it he looked, smell them? Let's, I'm going to leave that one hanging in the air. <laughs> <laughs> he has his ways. <laughs> He's a ranger, man. They're like hunters and stuff. They everything's you know smell. They use all the senses. <laughs> he, he, it doesn't mean he's Wolverine. <laughs> hey, if he wants to be Wolverine, I'm down. It has been now established that Heinrich can hunt by scent. I'm not going to argue with that. He uses all uh, sorts of stuff to track. Okay. <laughs> but he's like, I, I I scooped up their stuff um, and packed it, and I've got it with me, but. You know, it looked like it was a campsite. Well, they might have been striking out on their own, looking for treasure, or getting the hell out of town, or any number of things. We'll, uh, let's keep it down for now, see what's going on up ahead. Uh, there's some kind of festival or something going. Uh, spring it when the, uh, circumstances are right for a social advantage, I think. And he's like, okay, you got it, boss. Good work. Thank you. So, um, wash your gloves. <laughs> so, um, got this. So, as you head towards town, um, you see, I'm going to paste it into the, the chat just to make it easier. Oh, I was right. That's not ah, good. The Burning Man. Cool. Oh wait, are they putting someone in there? Yep. Ah, uh, you're just assuming. That ain't good. Well, look, look it man. has a, it has a, it has a, st it has a staircase. There's a visible spot for a person inside. Listen, when I see a giant wicker man with a man-sized compartment and torches, <laughs> we all know someone's about to go up in flames. Uh, ladies, uh, <laughs> happened to be fleeing the town to avoid being burned inside a giant moss man, did you? Um, no, but that's not unusual. They they do that about once a year, maybe around this time. It's it's spring, so, yeah, I'm talking, that's not a big deal. Oh, it's, it's a sacrifice to the god of harvest, isn't it? Well, it's for Hearn, the hunter. Yeah. What, what gets sacrificed? A person, I think, right? No, no. What do you think we are? Some sort of savages? Like they hunt <laughs> animals and they put animals in there. Oh and yeah. They put fruits and berries, and you know, they load up, load them up. Some honey, maybe. They just said it was not unusual for someone to run away to avoid being sacrificed <laughs> in the Burning Man. I just want to. Which one is it, guys? No. no, no. <laughs> they said it's not unusual, like for them to to build these wicker men. Okay, all right. Uh, that, that's what yeah. I, I. Sorry, if that's not what I conveyed, that's what all I right. meant to convey. Okay, all right. Not uh, like, it's it's not, not unusual for them to take sacrifices. Right. Uh, the guy isn't uh, very well traveled, but he's read a lot of books, so he gets worried <laughs> easily. Uh, sacrificing to the god of the hunt, they basically do it so that he gives them like a bountiful hunting season, right? I think that's the tradition. I'm talking. And then uh, you see Sella you say, it. like, it's some sort of pagan ritual that, for some reason, the mayor still <laughs> allows them to do. 
We've tried banning it, and they just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. <laughs> well, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone, it should be fine, right? It hurts their souls. What? Uh, as long as it doesn't kill anyone. Yeah. Well, at least there's that. I mean, really, uh, when you do die, your spiritual energy is just going to be stuck to the plane of positive energy or negative energy, whatever, and dissolute. <laughs> I really broader it. spectrum of divine I energies love, one or the other. So it's, I, I mean, that's nice though. It's very nice. I love how we ha how now we have the person who's just my religion is the best. We have a guy who just wants to go into a forge. And we have a guy who, and we have a guy who just says, "Magic." She's like, "We can get into a, you know, theosophical debate at a different time, but um, I can assure you that is not what the afterlife is." Fair enough. Um, well, uh, fortunately, my uh, esteemed colleague here, Heinrich, was able to recover some of your belongings from your campsite, um, so you're not uh, totally uh, without sucker in this uh, damnable material plane. Uh, they both, like, turn their heads really quick, and they, like, snap over to Heinrich, and they're like, how did oh, you dear. find... Thank you. Thank you is the word I'm looking for. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, did really you find what you were looking for out there? Uh, um, we yes, yes, we did. But those darn giants ate it. We were looking for we were looking for wild mushrooms. Uh huh. Okay. Suddenly, suddenly, I don't quite trust this woman of my god is the best. Don't know why, though. Well, uh, ladies, we've uh, yeah. gotten you safely back to town. Um, I'm sure we'll run across you before too long. We appreciate it. She's And Tacey will look at all of you. She's like, really do. I appreciate it. If you... Um, you know, need anything, come over to the bar. She's like, first round's on me, guys. I, I really appreciate And gal. Um, she's like, and I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And I'm sure Sella's going to get back to the church real soon. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure she's been missed. Could we have a... Heinrich or someone try and follow Sella or Tacey to see what they try and do. I, or I really feel like a real gentleman would escort her back to the church. <laughs> that's that's going to be on me, isn't it? Uh, well, fine. Yeah. <laughs> a real golem <laughs> would escort her. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Have they, have they noticed anything off about? This? No, you just you, yes, in general you just look like a dude in armor. Okay, good. So that's that's the thing. You just look like a dude in armor. So that's not, you know, uh, not that unusual. I'll ask, I'll ask Sella then. Um, would you like me to uh, escort you to the uh, Church of Yig? Was it? I think Ryan, right? Saint Yig. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she like looks and she starts to say like N -n -n -n, and then Tacy runs in and she's like I'm sure she would love that that would be great she's like I would really appreciate it too so please please do thank you thank you so much okay I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna split off from the party and escort her to the uh, church okay so you're gonna start Just to make sure she quote unquote gets there safely. <laughs> now you're getting it, kid. <laughs> so as you guys come into town, um, there's a real festival kind of atmosphere going on in the center of town here, um, where the well is. That's kind of where they've set up the the, the kind of mossy 
woody kind of, um, you know, Hearn the Hunter. It's got big stag ears. And they're, they're basically, they poured a bunch of, like, green moss and things on it. So he's green. Um, and then they've kind of, like, it's, you know, blazing kind of hot. And there are people just randomly on the streets with barrels giving out cups of different, you know, alcohols and things like that. Um, and there's kind of, you know, some sellers that are selling kind of like your uh, carnival kind type fair food, you know, meats on sticks and things like yes. that. Um, and... Uh, a real kind of festival attitude. Like there, there's just a, a good time that's happening by all uh, that's here. So it actually allows you guys to kind of sneak into town uh, because, you know, everyone's really kind of paying attention to this whole um, escapade that's going on. So you guys can kind of do what you want. Well, friends, uh, so Ryan, over am I? I am correct in assuming over here, number sixteen. Uh, there's a little keep up on the hillside or some such thing, right? No, that's uh, Iron Guard mod. That's like this is the road uh, Iron Guard mod. And which way is to the wizard? Fifteen that's is the, tower. the way to Barrow Maze. Um, I believe. Hold on, I have to look it up. Give me a second. But yeah, I'm ninety nine percent sure sixteen is Iron Guard mod. Just represent because that. I remember that there is a wizard here. I, I thought it was in ten, yeah. the telescope thing. Oh no, yeah. it's not. Never mind. If I were is, a wizard, that's where I live. Sixteen is Iron Guard mod, and thirteen is the Barrow Maze. The other two, you would have to investigate and figure out what those are. Uh, so uh, I won't say what those are at the moment. But, but listen, folks, uh, I think we ought to try to put in and see if we can't. Uh, Track down Bob's old friend uh, Krothos, see if he can put us up for the night and get this pile of treasure under lock and key before someone tries to snake it out from under us. Well, remember, I'm I'm uh, I'm escorting a uh, fair lady to the uh, Church of Yig. Right, I'm not going to steal your share. <laughs> now that you mentioned that. If, uh... <laughs> Are any of the shops open, Ryan? Like, is the whole town open since it's around nighttime? Um, most of the shops are closed down. I'm not going to say all of them, but I'm going to say most of them are. So if you yeah, wanted to go right, somewhere right. specific. Now, whatchamacallit, um, Rifon, you're pretty familiar with this town. Like, your uncle lives here. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, interesting. He's, he's pretty crazy. Oh. In fact, oh, I'm, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, he lives with humans. Okay, I get it. Yeah, he's an outcast. So. Number 11 is his shop slash house. So. All right, let's go there. He'll put us up for the night, but he'll give us work too. So, give us work <laughs> like, oh, Rifon, you're here. Take out the latrine. Help me assemble this desk. Probably. <laughs> Help me assemble the flugen horn. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to put contacts into my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Show me how to do that. And the TV keeps saying input. Uh, it's well, like no signal. up again, boy. <laughs> it's saying no signal. And so, what's this new rune? Why did? <laughs> Why do all the movies I watch have bars on top of them and on the bottom? So, <laughs> sorry, I used to work for a cable company as like their inbound team, and that's all I got was older people. It was, right, it was right when flat screens were becoming a thing, and they're like, "Why do I have bars on the top and the bottom?" Like, because you wanted a widescreen. Like, I don't want it. I, all the TVs I've ever had, the whole screen. I bought the whole TV, so I put the picture in the whole TV. Like, well, we, we don't control that. The stations send it to your house, and that's the way they send it. I don't want it. I don't want it like that. I need you to fix it. I need you to send someone out here to fix it. I'm like, I can send someone out there, but they're not going to be able to fix this. All right, sorry, that's my rant. It's like a 15 year old <laughs> rant, but it's my rant. All right. Uh, well, I certainly think we ought to catch up with family while we're in town. Uh, any allies we can find. Uh, uh, obviously, the people are better. 
So no. you do get along with his uncle, yes? Yes. All right. Just I checking. lived with him. I grew up with him. Oh. Right. That should have sent over. So you enter yeah. um, this little uh, shop, number eleven. It's obviously um, a Boer and Fletcher. There's basically like a bunch of um, arrows that are um, kind of in barrels and. There's a bunch of, uh, you know, strings laid out and there's a bunch of bows on the wall. And uh, but when you enter, it's almost like entering a, a different world. Um, like when you enter in, uh, the temperature changes in there ever so slightly. Like it just feels a little bit more, um, I don't know, dry would be my thing. Like it feels, you know, like a, a little bit more dry. The air, almost when you walk in, like the sound has been blocked. Um, so you don't hear like this big festival going out. There's like almost like a peaceful, tranquil kind of um, air to it. There's a little bit of wind chimes that are going inside the, uh, in the place. And there's a bunch of incense that's being burned um, to smell of kind of like a pine. Um, so, and you don't see anyone in there, um, but there is like a back part to where he lives. This is just the front of the uh, the front part that's like his uh, his uh, shop is the back part that is his living quarters. So what are you doing there, Rifon? Uncle V, I'm home. And you see like a, a curtain draw. And it's like a beaded curtain draws, you know, to the side. And um, Valeron steps out and he's like, he says in Elven, so only people who speak Elven get it. And he's like, oh, my precious boy, how are you? I respond in Elven. Very good. <clears throat> how, how's the shop been? How are you doing here? The shop is the same as when you left. But uh, I am glad to see that... You are here. Did you, were you able to find the ones that you were destined to find in that horrible place? Seems like it. Here they are. It's like, these are them. And he says it in a way that's kind of like, really? Um, Vance will laugh <laughs> audibly. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. He hasn't seen Horace yet. He doesn't know the absolute unit that is in the party. He's like, well, he's like, come, come in, come in. And he'll start speaking in common. Um, he's like, welcome um, to, my, to my home, all of you. We need, we need something. Uh, we need a storage for the night, per se, and a, a place to sleep. You are all more than welcome. It might get a little tight in here, but we will make do. I can uh, I can put down some extra bed cloths and things on the floor if people don't mind uh, don't mind doing that. Well, we certainly thank you for your hospitality, Mister. Bo my name is Vance. Uh, these are my colleagues, the stout dwarves Thorn and Thondon, um, Gertha, the shield maiden. Um, Heinrich Wagner, a, a citizen of these parts. Um, you get everybody? We have a, another friend, uh, Horace, should be short. Good, good. He's like, yes, please, come, come in. You came at an auspicious time. There is this, there is their celebration that they have. It seems like it was only yesterday that they were doing this, but I, I guess it was a year ago or so. Well, you're... You'll be happy to hear that your nephew is both uh, stout of heart and sharp of eye. Each of us <laughs> owe, uh, <laughs> owe him our lives in turn. He it looks indeed fortuitous like, that our paths crossed on the road. He goes, my boy, what happened to your arm? Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> oh, nothing. Just uh, a bit of adventure. A bit of experience. He looks Fun. at it and he goes, that's not a bit of adventure. That seems like you, you bit off a lot of adventure. Could be, yeah. I fell off a horse into a trap, a hobgoblin trap. We were trying to take him on. When you say hobgoblins, he, he noticeably almost winces. He 
it's like have you not have you not run into any of them have you stayed in the town have you been so blessed i have stayed in town i this is where this is my home and this is where i shall be um i sent you into the world because i i heard of great dangers and i figured that you would be my eyes and ears on these things hobgoblins you say yes the sort and giants we just killed a few giants and ogres Giants and ogres are, while scary, are often foolish and um, disorganized. But hobgoblins tend to be a menace that can stick around. <clears throat> these uh, these hobgoblins, we were basically hired by the the Duke of Iron Mott to. Find where they live, and now we're on the way back to them to tell them where they stay, where they hail. That is great. I'm I'm glad that you are doing it. Um, I'm glad that this is coming. What are they here? What are their numbers? Look at this bow. Part of my adventures. Look at these boots. (laughs) He'll look at them. He's like that bow is. Seems miraculous. It looks like it was forged by the gods themselves. <laughs> He's like, may I? You may. And so he starts like testing out the the pull strength. He's like, it pulls like a breeze, but it has the power of an ox. Fire a bow. <laughs> So he'll he'll just like grab an arrow basically from like you know one of the the bins and knocks it and just like fires and then it it does the split and his eyes get really big he's like that is quite quite the feat he like uh, with a flourish he'll like spin it and give it back to you he's like that looks like it was well earned I'm proud of you and he puts his hand on it, your shoulder. Um, and he's like, you are doing good in this world. And that's all that we can ask Little of you. Tear. Little tears come to my eyes as they well up. And see, I smile big. Oh, thank you. Everyone in the room hears gentle music playing. <laughs> <laughs> that is precious. Um, right, right about yeah, this so- time, like they're having a tender moment, and you hear doom, doom, doom. Um, that's, when, <laughs> that's when Horace will come back. But I'm going to cut to Horace because um, he's taking Sela back. So I don't know if there's anything in particular. Um, what is it? Uh, it's number six is the uh, the uh, Chapel of St. Yig that's there. Ah. On the map. And, oh, uh, they have a graveyard too? Yeah, uh-huh. it's, it's about back of the church. Um, yeah, don't have it there. The um, You get to the door and... She turns and looks at you. She's like, well, thank you very much for the escort. Um, If you would uh, allow me, I would like to come in and pay my respects to uh, Yig. I may not be a part of your religion, but I do know when to respect a god. But of course. And, like, she'll open the door up and... um, Standing just on the other side of the door, looking like they were getting ready to leave, um, is this man right here. He's older. Uh, he's very well groomed, um, and, but he's an older person. He's probably in his fifties or sixties, um, and uh. with you know spotted gray throughout his hair. Um, he's got a lot of worry lines basically on his side, uh, the side of his eyes. He's got a little bit of a paunch gut nowadays, but he still has the the like build of someone who had strength back in the day. He's still probably quite strong, but he's just a little uh, seasoned, would be the the way that uh, we could say it. And uh, and he'll look who and he'll is go. It? He's like, Sally, you're back. He's like, I prayed and prayed and prayed for your safe return, and you are here. Is this the man that brought you back? And she's like. Yes, he and his companions. And, like, before she can even finish it, the man, like, grasps your hand. And he's like, thank you. 
Thank you so much. Come in, come in. Please, please. Uh, of course, sir. Are you hurt by chance, Horace? Uh, you know, that is a very good question. And yeah, I am. I took a donkey to the gut. Okay. <laughs> so he yeah. looks and, and sees that you, you're, you you know, a little bit battered and bruised up a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit of blood leaking from one of your plates. Um... And he starts mumbling a silent prayer um, to to Saint Yig, and you gain four hit points back. Oh wow, he's he's good. That put me up to full. So he's like he he's like mumbles and then does that and then he's just like, thank you so much. He's like, we uh, we appreciate the fact that. Anyone would take time to, to bring back one of our own. He's like, you didn't it, even tell me you were leaving. It was no trouble at all, sir. She, he looks at her and he's like, you didn't even tell me you were leaving. Um, where were you all this time? Where, where were you? And she's like, I was off in the woods. I was just, I was getting some fresh air. And I uh, was captured by these evil creatures and taken capture and then these people came it wasn't a very big deal it wasn't okay and he looks at you and he's like forgive me forgive me i haven't even introduced myself i am othar um and you are uh my name is horace sherwood oh mr sherwood thank you so much he's like if you need a place to stay for the night we would be more than happy to house you here um in in the chapel of saint yig for all that you have done. You look like you are a spiritual man yourself. Um, yes, I follow Vulcan, the uh, Forge Father. Ah, yes. Honored member of the Pantheon. He seems to be a, uh, a very devout man, and his followers seem to be very devout in their belief. Uh, yes, yes. Um, I, I will sadly have to decline your offer. See, uh, one of my fellow compatriots has family in town, and we are staying with him. Oh, who is that? Uh, Rifon. I I forgot what his uncle's name was, but uh, no, you don't know. No, you don't know yet. Yeah, uh, he is an elf, though. Do you have an <laughs> elf in town? Valoran, the only elf in town. Um, and so he's like Valoran. Uh, most likely him. It's like Valoran is my uh, my friend. Valoran is a is a very good man. His uh, he can be a little, and you see, he's got like kind of a half bent smile. He's like mysterious, would be my uh, my wording for it. Um, but he's a very very good man, pure of heart. That is that is very good. Um, are is are you okay here with uh with the uh, so or would you like some uh, assistance with anything before I leave? No, I, I'm talking. I if I can assist you, please, while you're in town, just let you let you and all your friends know that they are more than welcome in the church if they need any assistance. Thank you. And uh, I guess I'll leave, possibly? Okay. I'll, I'll let you yeah. know. He's like, come, yeah. Sela. He, he's like, let us get you cleaned up. He's like, oh, my dear. He's like, thank you so much. He's like, after... And you hear this as you're leaving. Um, you definitely hear them say... Um, where... Yeah, he basically says like ever since Gamdar ran off and we never got uh, we never heard back from him. Um, he's like, I oh just, yeah, like, I just he's like, I, I I like I, I'm so worried I'm to lose so... any of my other people. Gamdar, Gamdar? Was, um, Gamdar was the one who had uh, uh, Felstar and Arnie killed him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> with the net 20. <laughs> oh yeah! Felstar, the weapon that was extremely yeah. cursed. He was about and to we'll... attack you guys, so I snuck around back and took him out. Okay, so, uh, should, should I say this, Ryan? Like, what happened with Felstar? You can say whatever you would like. Okay, basically, yeah. we got Felstar, and my oh, dwarf no, no. started oh, using oh, it. Oh, we don't need it. We don't need to go into all the backstory. Okay. Right? That's what I'm saying. Uh, like, we don't need to go into the backstory, but I'm talking, if you wanted to say it to Othar, you can if you want to, is what I would say. Uh, nah, nah. I, like, I don't think I should. Yeah, but, well, but, I don't even know, because, you know. I'll give it the short, could, short, ooh. short version. Gamdar was probably unbeknownst to Othar, but maybe not, um, attacking people on the roads and stealing money from them. He tried to do it to the group, and he was stabbed and deadified by Arnie uh, quite a bit. So that's why he never returned. And that happened in games prior to us even being online, prior to COVID. These are prior to COVID. The before answers. times. The before times when we met in the face-to-face -face world. So, <laughs> Such a foreign concept these days. <laughs> yep. The past is a foreign country. It was over a year ago, so there's that. Yeah, for sure. So, um, and are you returning back to Valoran's uh, shop? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's not really anything I can do. I can't drink. I can't eat. It, it, yeah, it's the best I can do. All right, so then the... the you can start smoking. Yeah. <laughs> thud, 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 thud. As you as you enter, basically the uh, the residence, um, and everyone just kind of turns because there's just like you ever get that feeling when you walk in and you think you walked in on the at the wrong moment because you kind of walked in on like a touching <laughs> moment. And you're like, hey guys, <laughs> you know guess what? <laughs> yeah, I introduce him to a uh, Valeran. This is a uh, this is Rifen. Uh, Oh no, right, right. this is Horus. <laughs> I'm Rifon. <Rifan. laughs> yes, hello, I am Rifon. Yeah. Like, this lovely. is Horus, he's part of our crew. He's, he helps out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lovely to I meet you. Help out, yeah. Very, very nice, okay. <laughs> you came in at a bad time, what can I say? <laughs> uh... I, I think I didn't hear what you said, Ryan. Uh, so he just says, greetings and welcome, Horace. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you, too. So, gentlemen, besides lodging, is there anything that I can do for you? If you wish, you can go and enjoy the festivities, or uh, I, I'm sure the bars are open, and if you wish to do a little revelry. Yeah, let's uh, get some gold out of our hoard and uh, go parouse around the actually, town a little bit. Actually, we should probably go buy a horse. Uh, no. I don't think any of the stables are open. Are the stables open, Ryan? Probably, probably not for like sale. You might be able to like uh, store your wagon at one or something like that. Oh yeah. Well. I Yes, I can't imagine that there will be much commerce done today, but uh, uh, Master Valorant, if uh, don't mind me being exceedingly blunt, um, our misadventures on the road and, uh, well, heroism by uh, Rifon and Lissim led to us uh, coming back with quite the haul, as you can imagine. Uh, I don't suppose you have some good uh, well, stash it night until we're able to secure... Uh, Tax saddle, cart horse, and such. In the he looks at you, and he's like, he's like, your he he's almost like, um, it's it's not being a prick, but he's being slightly elven condescending. He's like, oh, you got a horde, did you? He's like, he's like, I'm sure I can find a little um, a little bucket or something that I can put it in, and then we can put it underground or something like that. <laughs> No, Uncle. He's serious. Well, and he'll, I'm sure and he'll, that, uh, he'll do a smash cut at that, 
and then everyone's outside <laughs> looking at a fucking giant pile of fucking money. And he's just like, you are correct, nephew. <laughs> this is a lot of money. Um... <laughs> Um, we're gonna ruin the economy. Inflation, <laughs> gold will be worthless. <laughs> we're going to make the Musa on this one. <laughs> I like, mean, I already ruined the economy of the market by giving them three gold. Let's see. He's like, uh, yeah. so hmm, he's like. Why don't he's like I've got a very reasonable idea. He's like, give me uh, one second. Oh dear. And like he writes something on a piece of paper, and he's like, I will stay here with this. He's like, you should probably go over to, um, in between the the church and the and Bolo's place. He's like, uh, there's a little um, spot. HHRs. He's like, you You probably need to go and talk to him. If he doesn't oh, answer yeah. the door, he's like, keep hitting it. And when he gets mad at you, give him this note and tell him it's from me. Did Bolo, did Bolo, uh, Bolo's the one who owns the uh, tavern, correct? Yeah, right. it's, uh, it's seven, I think we're going to, right? Correct. Uh, uh, yeah. Correct so, me if I'm wrong. We kind of did have some memory wiped, somewhat, right? Somewhat, sure. It's been a long time since you've been here, so you, your characters have probably forgotten. It's been in game time. It's probably been a year and a half, two years since you guys have been here. So, did you guys piss off anybody locally that I should be aware of before I walk into this with you? Arnie burnt down Bolo's tavern. We don't know you. <laughs> but know no that. one knows that. Yeah. Only Arnie uh, knows that. And yeah. Arnie, knows that. Arnie doesn't even know that. Yeah, I'm not even sure Arnie knows <laughs> that because how wasted he was. Um, maybe. <laughs> Bolo, Bolo may be mad at me. What so. do you do? <laughs> do not remember the deal that I had with him. What? About the map. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> no, not, t- so not much. He promised that it, Bolo gave him a map, and he basically said, I'll give you the map, but I want a percentage of the profits that you take out of the dungeon. And then y'all never came back. <laughs> so, oh! <laughs> So that could be a problem. But that's just me. Well, let's let's just never go to Bolo's place ever again. The tavern? <laughs> yeah, let's just never go to the tavern ever again. So. Or you could come and settle up your debts. That's true. Yeah. Do yeah, but good. how much money would that take? Where's where did he give you the map to? Uh, uh, it was the snake place. It was. Yeah. Oh, it, so however much you pulled out of there. Uh, in the pre no, last time I remember it was like 250 what is it you bought so, the map for him for 250 and uh, I believe it was 50% of anything that came out of the case so pay him like you know 50 gold or whatever it is that you pulled out of the cave and uh, it'll be square yeah, because yeah, we didn't think it was a lot more than that <laughs> yeah we, we pulled out at least like what was it a thousand gold? So you guys can pay that out of your share of the treasure when we divvy it up. Well, currently, the only one that's here is Oakenshield <laughs> from that party. So Oakenshield can drink on the other side of the town at the other bar, and it's a big deal. And we can all just go in, yeah. No problem for us. <laughs> So, uh, we're, yeah, we're going yeah, never been 86 to... before, no big deal. Uh, so, who's staying with the cart, and who's going to, uh... Well, did you guys uh, want to go around the, uh, the festivities and see what's around? 
I mean, I'd really like to take care of this massive yeah. pile of money first. Um, don't get me wrong, but this is something like uh, I don't. So oh, I, yeah. thought, I thought Valyran was gonna fifty-two hundred years wages for a peasant family. We should probably do something. <laughs> for sure. So you head no. over to yeah, had, you can buy for that gold. Yeah, <laughs> you a head bar, over a house. You head over to um, number seven, and um, above it, it says Rosy Quartz Jeweler and Moneylender. Mm. Now we're talking. Proprietor Harold Hewen Reginald Huffenpuff. Ah, nice. Uh, so, so we're going to say the one with the most charisma should be the one banging at the door, right? No, just saying... Okay, just because you got a high charisma doesn't mean you can just wall for it and your guy will play yeah. it too. I mean, high charisma is pretty good. That is you, got, you got two more than me, or three more than me, right? Yeah, I... The most I'm you can determine is a plus two. Yes, it's a yeah. plus, plus two, and what is it? Right. Um... It plus two is the most you can have. So if you have plus one, you're only one down. But all that does is generally is dictate what we call a starting position. That doesn't dictate yeah. like you just automatically like everything goes golden. Um, it, it's that's that's what I'm saying. That, that matters here. Um, that's what I'm saying. It's about well playing, not stats wise. So I'm just gonna assume someone knocks on the door. Yeah. <laughs> I assume someone knocks on the door again. Someone bangs on the door. Someone bangs on the door. Boop, 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 boop. And then you hear like, what, 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 And like, you see a halfling uh, open up the door and he's like kind of squinting. He's holding a candle on a thing. His breath smells like he's been drinking something fierce. And he's he, he's a little tipsy, <laughs> like he's like not too stable on his feet. And he's like, "What? Who are you? And what's what's going on?" Uh, I guess I'll just give him the note. Or who had the Rifon had the note, right? Someone yeah, the crew him, had the note. Someone yeah. gives him the note, and like he looks, yeah. and his eyes get really big, and he's like. And he's looking at you, Rifon. He's like, Valoron, is that you? Nope. This is his nephew. Oh, Rifen. Rifen. Well, come on in, boys. Um, and, like, you see him, like, like, come on, can, can I in? Come on in. Right. And, like... He's like, give me one second, give me one second, give me one second. I was in the middle of something. Give me one second, give me one second, give me one second. But did did anybody check the note and see what it said? Valron definitely wrote down an estimation for how much gold we had. And he he goes and like he starts putting on pants with suspenders. <laughs> That's nice of him. Because <laughs> all he has is like a night shirt, and uh, he puts on a bow tie. Even though it's a night shirt, but he does have a, like a bow tie on because he's doing business, and uh, he doesn't have shoes because he's a halfling. Um, so he uh, he goes he goes. Looks like you boys hit quite the score. Uh, you are not incorrect, that? Master Halfling. We were hoping to draw a letter of credit or something a little more. And we would like to get a signature with this, please. He's like, um, that's an awful lot of money. So we can handle it a couple ways. He's like, I can do credit. I can probably write you a letter of credit for probably 5000 He's like, but I don't want to overextend myself too much. Um, uh, we're going to know. So I can do five. I can basically take 5000 in as a deposit here. Um, and I can hold it for you. Um, I can extend a line of credit. It'll be good within the, the Vice County. Um, I can exchange some of it for jewels, if you'd like to do that. It's much easier to carry. 
much easier to to do. He's like, I could probably get a couple thousand out of that. He's like, but the rest you're probably going to have to haul up to Iron Guard in order to to kind of trade it in. I've got a I've, I've got a contact up there that you guys can talk to. He's a good he's a good guy and a jeweler as well. Um, he'll definitely take my line of credit, but you know. If this is as much as he's saying, and he's like waving the note around, he's like, "That's a lot. That's a lot, boys." I'm just saying, how much? How much did we have? Like, uh, honestly, thirteen thousand seven hundred. Some like fifteen. Yeah. Oh God! That's and that's now, so not counting like the jewelry and the rings right. and gems and oh the lizard God. head, the wasp stingers, the the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like I could probably the bat. He's like, I could probably do yeah so if it's around 15k if what, is that what we're looking I could probably do a 5k deposit uh, which like I said I, I can give you some uh, some checks and you can write them you know somewhat locally because like, I'd watch out for those bastards in Bogtown because they might not take those checks I'm just going to tell you that they should take those what? checks but they're not because they're pricks or they might charge you double for checks because you know they don't they you know they're they're bad people over there and so like, gathered he burps He's well like, since uh you you count yourself among the good people no doubt master halfling and as a, a friend of valoran and of uh, rifen's esteemed lineage um sure that your rates are exceedingly reasonable family discounted uh yeah, I'm talking. I can give you a family discount. Uh, I'll do so five grand. We'll we'll you, you do a deposit with me of five grand. You, you, you we're friends. We're I'll marry your sister. So <laughs> he's like, if you want to do that, like if we got to do that, we'll do that. Um, so hopefully she's a handsome lass. Um, uh, I but, don't think she's your type. Um, okay, um, but. Um, I'll give you a ten percent mark on the on the jewels if that's what you want. Does that sound fair? You know, man's got to make his profit. So you give me fifty five hundred, I'll give you five grand in jewels. Uh, you guys good with that? And we only have to carry around five hundred pounds of gold instead of you know fifteen hundred pounds of. Gold. So I think that's pretty- wasn't it. Wait, how much? We had like eighteen hundred, right? No, you have like eighteen thousand. Oh yeah, eighteen thousand. Something around that. You you've got you've got some jewelry and stuff. And he's like jewelry and everything I'd have to do on a case by case basis, but you'd have to come tomorrow when I'm um less Yeah, yeah okay. Indisposed. Less yeah. underhill, uh, as us halflings would say. That's the the raw gold number, the fifteen thousand, wow. eighteen thousand, or whatever, wasn't even counting like the jewelry stuff. Like that's all carry yeah. with us. We just what we need to do is cut down the coins into something portable, so that if we get ambushed, it's not like, sorry guys, got to leave the money again. Hey. It's right yeah, for the jewels. I don't know. <laughs> let's give him, let's give him five thousand five hundred yeah, and I, uh, take five thousand worth of jewels. Yeah, we don't. We can't but, tell him no. It's not like there's other business in town that will take yeah. thousands of coins off of us. So he's willing to take five thousand cash and and put it as a like a bank account in essence. Um, so he's willing to do that, and he'll give you in essence like letters of credit that you can use. Um, and then he's also willing to take five grand more, and he'll he'll switch them out with jewels for you. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. So. Is is does yeah, that okay. sound good? Doing uh, it. My. He's like, all right. We can do this in the morning, though. He's like, I, 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 I can't. Tonight's not gonna be a thing. I gotta look at the. I gotta. Hit the, what's the thing that goes on your eye that you do the looking? Because I gotta get one of those. Uh, it's called a loop. Uh, yeah, I, I know that. Um, because I'm a jeweler. And that's what I do. <laughs> but, and then you hear from upstairs, like you hear, "Oh yeah, HH, are you coming back?" And in a very feminine but recognizable voice. Uh, oh, yeah. Perny. Okay. Perny. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, 
Well, we've. I think we've bothered you long enough, uh, Master Puffles. Puff. 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 puff, puff. Um. <laughs> He's like. So do we have? Do we have a uh, a deal? Do we have a, a bargain? Do we have a, uh, a an thing? accord? An accord. Uh. I vote yes if you all are yeah. in agreement. Yeah, so, I vote yes too. Tomorrow, yeah. you bring me 10,500. Uh, 10, I will have your letters ready and I will uh, I'll have some jewels ready for you. All right. Uh, what do we do with the gold till then? That Sit on top on of me. it and have no fun. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just go sleep in the gold. <laughs> uh, Scrooge McDuck it. <laughs> so the same, the Scrooge McDuck that shit. So he will uh, spit in his hand and stick it out to you, Rifon. Are we at an accord? Uh, yeah, one of the dwarves can uh, shake your hand. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you're from the other part of Valorant's family. I got it. I got it. <laughs> uh, he'll look at over at you, uh, uh, Oak and Shield, and he'll like stick out his hand. So we had an accord. Yeah, I uh, shake my hand with his. All right, gentlemen. Then I have things to do. So if you would be so kind as to uh, yeah. vacate the premises. Yeah. He didn't wash yeah. his hand can, before you can, shaking yours. You can do it all night long. Uh, just <laughs> let, let's just get out of here. I'm going to sleep in literally 15,000 gold. <laughs> I'm. So, what I'm going to say is, if you want... Um, everyone can go carousing, or anyone cannot go carousing. It's up to them. Um, you will end up spending a lot of money, but money can give you cool things for carousing. I have a lovely carousing table, though the last time it was used, a bar did get burned down. Um, but we do have a cool carousing if people want to do it. If if Bolo's bar gets burnt down again, I feel like we're never using the carousing table. Vance is rolling a dice literally and figuratively and trying to track down his buddy uh, Krothos, who is no doubt, uh, you know, up to his armpits in a keg somewhere. So uh, there's work to be done, lads, and it's at the bottom of this bottle. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go sit on the gold and see how comfy it is of a bed. All right. Does anyone want to do carousing, like go out and carouse a little and spend money? Yeah, I will. I will. Yeah, I'll right. take about like 200 gold. So, however much money you spend will. So, it basically has to go in increments. Um, if you spend 100, you can get 100 XP. If you spend 400, you can get 200 XP. If you spend 900, you can get 300 XP. So, however much you want to go ahead and spend, that's what you can do. Anyone want to? If I were like right on the edge and maybe with it, that's tough. Are we going to divvy up the uh, the loot in the cart up to the? Are we going to like because we have five thousand gold, right? So yeah. what we could do is if we want to like cash out the percentage that we aren't going to be able to convert to gems and credit and stuff, and just hand it out to everybody. Yep. You do what you want with it at this point. That's all right. I'll mm -hmm. let y'all discuss and we'll take a break. We'll come back in like five minutes. I got to use the restroom anyway. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, we'll we'll pause it here for a minute and y'all can decide your carousing. We might do it random. I might randomize the amount that you end up spending. So it might be a dice roll. Um, it'll probably be something like a D6 times 100 and that's how much you end up spending. Uh, so let's start thinking about that. So that'll be kind of where we're at. All right. Be back. So what we could, so I'm looking at the the like chart here of all the crap that we picked up over <laughs> over long. We've been vacuuming up all over the place, and just in coins, I think we're around yeah, it's probably about fifteen thousand gold. 
So if we're going to take 5,000 of it and put it in with the half of the bank there to get checks, we're going to get 5,000 worth of gems with a 500 gold premium. Uh, That's 4,500 gold left. We're giving him the silver, though, right? Yeah, we'll take whatever the most... We'll, he has coins probably to change. We could change it into yeah. platinum. It's more portable or electrum or whatever we want to do, I imagine. Uh, um, so it's 40... But just like using GP as a baseline easy unit of conversion. Yeah. So there's like 4,500 left. And... Horus, Thond and Thorin, Vance, Rifon, Hagertha. And Heinrich. And Hein does does Heinrich get a full share? Yeah, he's he's a he's a ally now. He's yeah, so we'll divide this bit by seven then, which is conveniently whatever that number is. Uh, what? Well, what's it? Six hundred and change. What's the gold? So it's forty five hundred divided by seven, whatever that is. Uh, six fifty. Like it's six hundred and forty two point nine. Oh, close. Yeah, so, so... Do you want to ask why if you want to round it up? No. Um, well, I mean, there's enough little loose change. We could probably call it 643 apiece. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can, I can take less on it. Like, I could take one or two less. Just because... Well, actually... I do want to buy a forge, so... I well, mean... so this is just the spare change. We're going to have, like, 10,000... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Right, okay. That we also will split up, and what is that? I think that um, Heinrich should not get a full share of that. Why? Um, well, Could... he, he just joined after we did all the work. Could Arnie okay, also get a half share? Because he did half of that stuff. Yeah, Arnie, Arnie should... Yeah, we got to cash Arnie in, too, so... <laughs> But that he could get another consideration. He didn't get any of the thirteen thousand. So. Eric and Gage. Hey, there we go. How about this? If we divide it into seven and a half shares, Oof. then it's six hundred. Oh, <laughs> wish I was better at math. Oh, no. You don't have to do it for this one. This one is fine. I was talking about for the ten k. So it'd be 600 gold a piece and then 300 for Arnie if we put some aside. And then the, the math comes out. Hey, hey Eric and Gage, you know, I just remember what we could do now. What? Remember how before we were trying to build the, like the bridge tunnel type thing? But we're not to, doing uh, that right now. We yeah. need to deliver, we need to deliver stuff to the king. We need to make the army we need to make yeah. the army of fire races, and then we need to kick some hobgoblin ass. Well, infrastructure is an important part of. I don't know what tunnel you're talking about. The it's it's into the barrow more. No, before we were thinking when we we're doing uh, the barrow maze. We yeah, were yeah. Doing the barrow like, more. This is when we met in person. We had this idea. Yeah, it's into the barrow more, which yeah. we're not going into yet. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, like, we got enough gold now, but I'm explaining to everyone else that uh, we were mm-hmm. planning on, like, buying, like, logs and make, like, a land bridge type thing. Like, through the swamp? Yeah, yeah. through the swamp. Sure. I don't so think that's now, a bad idea, necessarily. Uh, and we were thinking, too, like, just outside the build maze, we built some type of, like, protective, like, yeah, like a fort, basically. And we can, like, uh, choke... I told people to sleep in the fort, basically. We were gonna, like, make a camp. Yeah. Yeah, but... I I almost forgot. Uh, you remember... You remember that mace I wanted to build? That hammer I wanted to make? That's gonna take, like, many months? Yeah, which... Which, if we do that, we have enough gold now to do it. Because I think if... We, I remember correctly, it was like 18,000 gold if we're going to do it. And yeah, but we're not doing it now. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, so. keep that in mind when we actually do. But, uh, I should, uh, you know, when, when Ryan gets back, 
Uh, I think I'm gonna, like, buy a, buy a container, like a glass container of some kind, and just start with the, uh, bloodletting, just to... Uh, don't, don't bloodlet inside somebody else's home. <laughs> I'm not, not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm bloodletting in the cart, obviously. Just, you know, maybe, maybe somewhere private, somewhere secluded, it's, you know, it's, it's a personal thing. Yeah, yeah, crazy. in in a cart full of gold. That's secluded. That sounds crazy. like a fetish thing at that point. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where it gets a little uh, weird. All right, so my vote, we've got if we've got 4500 gold, everybody gets 600 and we put 300 aside for Arnie and his uh, you know, um, workers comp. <laughs> so, what I could and say then it comes is out even. What I could say is you can set this is how I'm going to do it. You can set a maximum amount of uh, gold your your character wants to spend. Like, I'm going out with 300 bucks in my pocket, or 300 gold in my pocket, so I don't want to spend more than 300. Then I will make you roll a die, um, depending on how big an amount is that you're, you're planning on using. And if you roll over the amount, times 100, then you're going to have some sort of critical thing, some sort of, like, got to roll on a table of, like, Oh shit! What did I do last night? Otherwise, you're just gonna gain XP based on how much you you spent. So there you go. I'll let everyone make the decision on how much they want to spend. I think Billy figured it all out, right? Well, for for splitting up how much uh, money everybody gets, right? So everyone might. Everyone can split up, but also people have personal money, so I don't know if they want to go crazy. So that's kind well, of that's that's what I mean. Is so. Of so like I figure in coins we have about we have fifteen thousand gold give or take. If ten thousand five hundred of that is going into the halfling bank, either as letter of credit or gems or percentage on the top, that's forty five hundred left. That's enough for everybody to get six hundred, including the NPCs, and to save a three hundred gold little chunk for Arnie for workers cop. So it comes out even for everybody. Okay. So, so if everybody uh, wants to blow their wad here, like, I don't, how do you spend 600 gold in a town where a beer is a copper? I don't know. Figure it out, guys. A lot or of times, you got this. A lot of times it ends up you just, like, give it to people or... Well, this place also has... <laughs> this place has a gambling den in it, and it's also there got... You go. It's got, um, you know, a, uh, a house of soiled doves. So there are ways to spend money. There's always ways. Yeah, I, I don't doubt it. Ways to, to, spend ways to lose it, if not to spend it. <laughs> Guys, I just realized. Horse is immune to the carnal desires of just spending bunch of gold. He's not immune to the carnal desires of wallowing around in it for his blood ritual, though, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen! All right, so I'm going to go down the line, and you tell me if you want to do this or not. So we'll start. Oak and Shield, are you going to party or not? Uh, uh, how much gold are we going to split up the thing again? Uh, like, are, looks like everyone gets 600 is what I what I was hearing. Uh, sure, I'm going to do 310. Well, just it's got to be even 100. Oh. Increments. That's what we're doing. Okay, 300. All right, so go ahead and roll a d6 for me. All right, so you partied hard. You lose all 300, which means you're going to gain you're going to gain 150 XP for that. And do I add the 10% bonus to that? No, this isn't a 10% thing. This is just right. flat XP that you get. Go ahead and roll a d20 for me. Oh, no. Don't burn down the bar. What's the I number? I can't see. It's on another down page. down the bar. It's 13. 13? If you burn down Bolo's bar... <gasps> you get a percent bonus on that? The 150? You do not. No. Nah. Okay, I got you. I know, okay, so I know what's going to happen with you. I gotta, I'm going to take my little sticky pad out here. Oh, no. 
Okay. How much of the town is left in flames, Ryan? Uh, we're going to go to the next one. Um, Horace, do you want to party or no? Uh, no. No partying. All right, we will keep Well, I, I do want to buy something, but, you know. That'll be a different time. This is the party time. Right. So, <laughs> the... Rifon, are you partying or not partying? Yes, I'm spending 100 gold. 100 gold? All right, roll a D2. <laughs> Ten. You you literally have a fifty percent chance of. Oh my god, that was beautiful. What do you roll? I can't see. I rolled a one. one. You rolled a, a one. one. All right, so you party, you get fifty XP, and you don't have a you don't have an incident. You have a lovely time. You're an you're an elven gentleman. So. Sweet. All right, um, we will continue to go down the line. Uh, where is my line? I, was it so I get 50 XP? I thought it was 100 to 100. It's not 100 but... to 100. It's half of whatever the amount is. Okay. All right. Cool. So the... Uh, Hagurtha's going out. Hagurtha is party. straight hardcore. So if she got 600, she's spending yeah, she's 600. Spent, she's spending it. At, well, uh, her... Didn't her brother die and like all her family's oh, yeah. dead except the druid guy and she's been hanging out with us for weeks. Like so, she uh she's trying ahead. to kill herself with alcohol. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead and roll uh, a D eight for her. Oh, that ain't good. Three. Okay, so she ends up spending three hundred. So she doesn't spend the whole lot. Um and she Amateur. gave she gains 150 XP. Does she gain like 150 or the uh no, she gets just, the just, she gets the flat rate. 150, so she's gonna get it. Oh wow. So that's, that's good. Her. It's gotta get her that much closer. Whatchamacallit. Uh Heinrich will not be partying. He's a very he's sending some of his money home <laughs> to his family. Uh because he, that's how he works. Um, what is it? Is, um, Vance gonna, gonna party hard? Uh, making movies, making songs, and fighting around the world? Exactly. That's what we decided. How much um, is he gonna spend? Uh, I mean, you really can't get a good logger in this town, so how far can, can you really go? I'll, uh, I'll shell out 200 of the GPs since you went through the trouble of making the chart. Go. Ahead. Oh, I stole the chart, but yes, go ahead. Um, go ahead and roll a uh, d4. Isn't 600 the safest amount you can do? Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, so you spend all 200. Um, Vance and... wakes up in the blood cart with the gold. <laughs> 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 go, ahead, go ahead and roll a d20. No, this wall, oh, he's supposed to wall a high-low. Uh, it really, it, it's a mix of both. Yeah. What is the number? Lucky 15. Oh, no. Vance chokes to death on a Vienna sausage. <laughs> Make a new character. <laughs> uh, uh, burning down Colo uh, Bello's uh, bar, that was like seven, right? Roll a D3. Oh, no. The best number on a D three. It's a crit, right? A three? Yeah. Uh, a, yes. a crit on a three. So it's green. Oh man, I love this so much. This is so uh -oh. great. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> what have you done? Button follow his ball. I found down. this really cool, like wicker giant man. Yeah. It looks like it's taking like dry inside. I'm gonna take a nap. It's the most unvanced thing ever, but it makes sense. Like it's one of those decisions you make when you're drunk that makes total sense. But it's so against type. It's amazing. Um, and um, ha who have I not done yet? I think that's everybody. Is that everybody or no? Wait, um, uh, Thondon. Yeah, go ahead. How much are you willing to spend? The whole lot. Six hundred. Huh? Sure. 
Yeah, roll D8. That is, that is the safest amount to actually spend. So you, you know? end up spending 500 of it, but you get 250 XP. All right. With no bonus? With No, it's not a bonus. It's flat 250, but 250, okay. you spend right. 500, and you don't no have an incident. Good. Easy. So is that everyone? Have, has everyone gone? I think, I think everyone's so. gone. Okay. So Eric the Cartman has a single glass of port while weeping over Arnie. <laughs> Eric the Cartman will stay with the cart as well because he's dedicated <laughs> Wait. to his job. Damn it! Wait, wasn't wasn't Eric the Cartman staying with the oh, yeah, frog he's, mother? He's a, he's That's what I mean. Is is far away <laughs> over the moors. Eric the Cartman weeps over his beloved Arnie as he enjoys a single glass of frog juice. So, <laughs> Billy, roll me one more d6, please. Oh, God. you know, the more you make me roll, the more likely it is to get worse. <laughs> It's yeah, uh, I think you injured yourself badly. <laughs> okay. So Vance decides to enter a cage fighting tournament. Um, he's <laughs> going for the knife. Yes. That sounds about right. <laughs> and he ends up fighting a fifth level fighter. <laughs> oh, God. Pansy. Now. He's going to look really silly when I melt his brain with my mind. <laughs> So, um, I don't know if you, if you want to roll it out, we can, but I'm pretty sure in a, in a fisticuffs, the level five fighter is going to take you, but you know, it's Did up to you. There? Oh, I don't, wanna, I don't want to drag everybody's uh, time out with a <laughs> fight, but I want to roll off. I would like some sort of weighted okay. roll. Let's do it. Um, we to see how we do. So what I'm going to say is, um, we're going to make it a strength check. Um, I'm going to say the fighter's got a 15, and I'm going to say um, you're level, what, four? Vance, are you four? So I've got, yeah, I am, yeah. So I, I still have base, base 19 Thacko. You're still base 19 Thacko. Um, he would be pluses. So um, I'm going to give you a, you got to add two to the roll, so because it make it more difficult for you. So, and it's whoever gets highest without going over. So I'm going to say he's a base 15. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click the button for strength check. Yep. And I'm going to say threshold modifier minus two. Plus two, really? Oh, plus I think two. it. I think it calculates in as a minus equals a plus. Go ahead and do it. We can do the math if it if it screws could up. Could I bet on? Could I bet on Vance? Okay. Yeah. My strength is a nine. I'm just going to roll a flat d20. Oh god, yeah, that'll work. And you tell me, tell me how we do. And low is good, right? Low is good. I'm going to tell you, he just failed. Come on, Vance! I rolled it. Ah! No! <laughs> so, you both yeah. fail. It's going to keep going to another roll-off. Because basically, right. you get into the ring, and he's hitting you. But you're throwing the occasional punch back. You're normally not this tough, but you're really drunk. And that helps. That's how it goes, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I have not yet begun to drink. You are you're bare chested and you're in in a, a, a ring that's it's not even a ring, it's just ropes, basically like around a dirt pit. Um, and this guy, his name is uh, uh, we're gonna call him uh, Bruiser. Bruiser Stone. <laughs> that's his name. Um, and he is going to be um, getting ready yeah, to Part of your money that you guys are spending is your bets and everything like that. All right. One more. Hey. Still a fan. Oh! D20 punch to the face. Wait, no, that's over, though. <laughs> I rolled a fucking 19, so I failed again. <laughs> so you managed to do some, like, um, like whatchamacallit, um... What's his face? Sherlock Holmes. You're like doing some like, and you just like discombobulate. You just kind of give him a chop to the throat, and you're just like, ah, weak spot, and it works. So he like stumbles back. He's not out of the fight, but damn, is is this going on longer than anyone in the crowd like would expect this to go on? All right, I got I, I got one more. I gotta take it off GM roll. It's off GM roll. I don't know why it's rolling that way. 
Vance, still, still failing over here. Oh, no, Vance. So oh, this, he got me. No. This time he got you. So he basically, like, he comes back at you and you're like, I'm going to do the chop thing again. That worked well. <laughs> <laughs> and you go to do a chop and he just gives you a haymaker that starts on, uh, that starts at number four and ends <laughs> at number five, going all the way around. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, whoa. And uh, you go down. Uh, you go out. But it was, you know, that's where you got the XP from, though. It was a learning experience. <laughs> at nine okay. strength, 13 constitution, though. <laughs> <laughs> Living it up. So, um, now, Oaken Shield. As you guys wake in the morning, you notice that there are now signs that have been kind of put up around town that say wanted. <laughs> and, it, and it's got uh -oh. a little like sketch of Oaken Shield. Um, and it's for, what is it? Uh, public indecency. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, time to turn Oakenshield in. <laughs> so, Oakenshield, you don't exactly remember what you did, all right? Uh, but you know that it, it says on the bottom of the complaint that something about scaring chickens. Um, you're not 100% <laughs> sure. You're not 100% sure what that means, but, you know, it happened. So. Uh, I guess I went to Skyrim. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, oh, but no, no, the town would have killed you by now. <laughs> so, but everyone wakes up the next day, a little bit of a, for those who were partying, a little bit of a hangover, but, you know, feeling okay. Um, you know, Vance, you have some superficial damage, but you're fine. Uh, it's all temp damage, because, you know, it wasn't a, you guys weren't out for blood kind of thing. This wasn't a, this wasn't a death match. So, um, but you like, all, um, you all probably ended up... should have, uh, should have read the whole book on boxing. <laughs> <laughs> you all end up in, um, in Valoran's basically, um, you know, uh, a state or house, I guess. Uh, by the end of the night, you come, everyone comes in stumbling in at different hours. And there you go. So y'all spent some money the hard way. Hey, Ryan? Mm-hmm. How comfy is the gold cart? Uh it's not very comfy. Ah. Uh, that's a shame. Yeah. Yeah, sleeping on a pile of gold is best left to dragons. Uh. Yeah. Uh so would I be able to buy something like during the festivities? Not in, like, a shop. For the most part, all the shops are closed. Ah. All right. So, but it is the next day, so y'all can right. do what you guys want to do at this point. I mean, I just I just want to buy something, and then, like, we can head out of town. Actually, you this know? is what's going to happen. I, mean, I like this so much more. We're going to do this. Do this, do this, do this. So it's early in the morning. And you hear, like, a beating on the door. That's a good idea. Oh, no. I'm not even doing it. <laughs> it's not uh, my house. Uh, should, is Valron answering it? Yeah. Yeah. He's not. He hasn't answered it yet, so... Uh, I... Do, 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 should do, do, I, do, do. guys... Hey, uh, Uncle, is there a, a way out the back or something? <laughs> He's like, is there is there something I should know? I, I don't know. Do, 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 do. Can, can I see who it is? With, like, look through like a window and time to be sneaky. Um, yeah, you see this guy. You see, I uh, nothing who? came up on my end. No, yeah. nothing. Came, oh, hold on, I gotta adjust their view. Hold on. Edit in players' terms. Yeah. 
Oh. You see that guy, he's there. You see... That guy, he's there. And you see a handful of guards. Oh, Fuck. <laughs> ah, splendid. Wait, you guys, Proto. You guys probably want to answer this. Yeah, I'll answer it. I'll I, answer. I'm heading back, you know, upstairs to level. <laughs> yeah, I'm answering it. <laughs> yeah, I'll answer it as well. <laughs> Um, the, the, uh, um, the one who... Vance, you should probably come over here and answer the door with us. <clears throat> Something the matter? What's all that banging? Yes. Uh, Krothos is here. Oh, he, good. I was he... looking for him all night. Um, it's another older gentleman who's there with black hair, kind of, uh, a little greasy kind of black hair. Um... He basically says, yes, uh, we were to understand that the wanted criminal uh, who goes by the name of Oakenshield or Oakenshield the Large, apparently, um, <laughs> was staying in this residence. He has a formal complaint lodged against him and he needs to be taken over to the stocks. Uh, um, who in the hells are you? Excuse me, Krothos, lad. How have you been? I was looking for you all night. And he like squints. He's like, Vance, is that you? Smash past whoever this greasy guy is. <laughs> He's like, Vance. Whoa, uh, Vance. And like he goes up and he like hugs you. He's like, How you been, man? Like, what are you doing? Why are you here? I'm sleeping it off for the most part. Got uh, caught up in your um, festivities last night. Um, we need to get back to, to the mot. Uh, we have news for your father. It's uh, about the hobgoblins. It's like we need to catch up too, of course, but, uh, you know, national emergency and all that. And I haven't had breakfast. He's like, what happened to your face? <laughs> uh, Bruce the bruiser, Benny the, the bungler, I, you know, I really couldn't tell you. He goes, wait a minute, uh, that was, he goes, that was you that fought Bruiser Stone? Ah, oh, that's the lad. Yeah, hell oh, of a, man. hell of a haymaker. Um, uh, it's, like, it's probably just a hairline fracture, I'm not too worried about it. Nothing with pure light wounds won't be able to fix right he's up. Like, he's like, I'm not even mad, I'm just impressed. <laughs> uh, like, but you moved up in the world, uh, government duties, overseeing the small folk, maintaining law and order, all that. Yeah, yeah, you know, this is basically my place. Like, uh, you know, I run it. Um, so I heard some big adventurers were coming into town with a big score. Um, I, I assume that's y'all, right? The very same. Um, I tell you what, is there somewhere that uh, that we all could talk in, in private? Um, there's grave goings on in the, in the duchy. So, um... He's like, well, I usually do my residencing over... Um, over in the back, I'm talking, if you want to come meet me over there, I can get us breakfast. Um, you know. Splendid, splendid, yes. Um, I, uh, I hate to impose, but uh, my companions um, and I have vital intelligence uh, about the, uh, some like, of the ongoing uh, threats. He's like, you gotta meet me at the foul pheasant. He's like, before we ah, go, though, he's uh -huh. like, do... Have you seen this guy? And he's like holding up a wanted picture of, of Oak and Shield. <laughs> oh, certainly. Um, we'll we'll pay the fine. What's uh, what is it? Uh, Oak and Shield. Roll a D silver. Roll a D six. Oh God! Please roll low. <laughs> oh, thank God. What do you roll? Oh, okay. He's like normally we can get away with. I'm talking, you can pay the actual fine, and it's 200 but if you want to just pay the fine now to me, it's just $100. Uh, not you, but him. Oh, certainly, certainly, of course. Um, it uh, gets around all those uh, paperwork, filing fees, clerk right, fees. Um, right, the savings right. is up front, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Costly, exactly. you're paying us back. Right, Oak and Shield. Yeah. 
do, do I do I hear this? I will very pointedly make sure that you do. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I'm coming now with the hundred gold. He's like, now stay away from those chickens, all right? He's like, I, I don't I don't like taking this from you any more than you like giving it, but you know, fair is fair. And I have to go and compensate the the offended. And he tosses the sack over to um to Olis there. Um and he's like he's like, take care of that for me. He's like, Yes sir, yes sir. Expensive chickens. It's expensive running a town. <clears throat> well, like, uh, ought to be enough in there to cover for you to spot us breakfast, I suspect. Um Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I get rashers that. might be in order. I per- meet me over at the foul pheasant. I always get free breakfast there. So splendid. Uh, while everyone's doing that, can I just like take the card over to uh, to uh, what's his face? H H H whatever his name is, and just like get the uh, gems and the credit and stuff. And, yeah, like, I'll go, I'll go do the you. business making. Sure, if y'all want to go. Because over you know I don't need breakfast. I don't need food, so you don't want to sit at the table awkwardly and wish you could eat the bacon. Uh, not not particularly, you know. <laughs> I I already smell like a uh, cedar wood fire. Uh, I I don't want to, you know. Uh, if so, you angle it right, you can actually cook an egg on Horace's forehead. When you <laughs> when you get over to the place. Um, HH has it all set and ready to go. Um, he gives you, like, basically a a stack of letters of credit where you can basically just write in the amount, um, and, um, you know, and then sign off on it. And Uh then, uh, Uh, he gives you... I'm just gonna get out my shovel, I guess, right? Oh, he, what is it? He has people that will come and do that. That are gonna take care of it. Um... (laughs) So that, he's basically got uh, staff that will go out there, and they basically they basically have scales, and they just start weighing gold after gold after gold after gold, and they're just putting it into uh, 500 gold sacks. So they're just weighing like 50 pounds of gold, 50 pounds of gold, 50 pounds of gold, 50 pounds of gold, and, that's, and they're pretty efficient at it. He ends up giving you um, 50 rubies, and they're each worth 100. Um, oh. so that cuts down the weight by quite a bit. You, you know, 10 rubies equals one pound. So you basically gone from 500 pounds to five pounds. Okay. He gives you a sack. And we have a, a writ of credit as well. Yep. And you've got a, a writ of credit. So oh. he, he kept up his end. So. So, uh, okay. yeah, I guess, yeah. He's like, it's a pleasure doing business with all of y'all. He's like, especially in the, the daylight hours. He's got like a little pipe that he's smoking. He's like, nothing takes the edge off, but a little bit of pipe weed in the morning after you've had a few too many drinks. Uh, uh, yes. And again, sorry for the, uh, trouble last night. No trouble. No trouble for, for something like this. No trouble. No trouble indeed. <laughs> you guys come back anytime you want. And you bother me with things like this. <laughs> He's like, I'll be more than happy to take a look for things like this. Sound good? Uh, yeah. Good. Yep. All right. So um, I assume the rest of y'all are going to head over to the foul pheasant. Yeah, get breakfast. Oh, you can drink mimosas. Oh, you can sweet. drink mimosas. So the foul pheasant is a is a weird location. Because it's technically, technically by like the law or by like the, the, by what it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be kind of a bar um, slash inn, but it's also a gambling house and soiled doves as well. So um, that's its real stock and trade. Uh, so it, it's you know, it the 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 brazen strumpet. Is like Bolo's Bar. That's like your standard kind of Dungeons and Dragons tavern slash inn. Like this one has a little bit more of a, a flair to it. But your friend uh, Krothos, like this is where he stays. Like he lives here. 
Which building is it? It is number nine. It's right behind. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. That. Okay. Right. So you guys come in, and there's a bunch of um, what is it like silks that have been hung up. There's a bunch of like uh, slightly lewd art um, that's been put all over. So it's all like you know, um, you know, half naked ladies standing in front of a pond kind of thing. Like uh, think very kind of uh, Greco-Roman kind of art styles and things like that. A lot of form uh, uh, pictures and soft lighting. So they have like you know. Um, candles and things like that but they've been like colored glass that's been put upon it um but the place is very tidy and very clean um compared to a lot of the locations that are here in town and as you enter uh your eyes have to adjust a little bit because like i said you're coming from outside where it's pretty bright into a, a location that's kind of dark um and um you see waiting right at the door for you is little miss perny in all of her glory. So she'll look up and she's like, oh, you're the one that fought Bruiser last night, aren't you? Uh, worse things have happened to better been, I'm sure. Oh, it definitely, hon. But that's just, uh, it, that's just a shame. She's like, bless your little heart. She's like, well, you know, honestly, I think they should rename him Hairline Fracture. Bruiser's a little bit underselling it. <laughs> so she's like, would you like me to get you a, a damp cloth or just a hot pot of coffee? Um, you know, honestly, uh, both, yes. <laughs> With a, a bit of brandy in, uh, in the second She's like, I assume you're going to be taking uh, breakfast in the parlor with um, Master Master Iron Guard, right? Certainly, certainly. Catching up to do. And she's like, she's like, she'll look back and she's like, Trixie, why don't you go ahead and show them to the to the parlor? And um, a rather lovely human woman um, kind of comes over and she's like, come on, right this way. And she basically escorts you over to like kind of like a private room area. You can tell that the table that they're using is probably some sort of gambling table, like either poker or some sort of, you know, gambling, three three dragon ante um, slash craps or something like that. Um, but it converts basically into like a table, like you can just slap a top on it. Um, and basically now it's a dining table. And that's kind of what's been converted in this back room. Um, and you see there's a there's a giant spread basically out, you know, with all sorts of breakfast accoutrement. Well, time to tuck in then, I think, fellows. So in the room is Alice Black, uh, Blackfeld and, um, and Sir Krothos. Um, so both of the, those gentlemen are, are there. Um, and there's two uh, guards, for a lesser sh um, word, that are standing at the door. He's like, come, come have a seat. Yeah, I'll go and sit down in, in there with him. Probably talking to Vance more than me, though. Well, he's kind of like looking at all of y'all like, any friend of Vance is a friend of mine. Please, please, please. Yeah, nothing to be shy about, folks. Looks like a good spread. He's like, now you were saying uh, something about having some information for my father? Uh, well, Krothos, um, funny enough, I was headed over here to visit you after we'd written, and, uh, well, enslaved by hobgoblins, of all things. I would not have thought, uh, you know, in the civilized lands to run into such indignity, but um, fortunately, uh, these dowdy heroes uh, delivered me from, uh, well, most dire circumstance, and I've kind of fallen in with them um, into the plundering life ever since. Um, when I got to Iron Guard Mott, you were nowhere to be found, but, uh, well, your father um, pressed upon us the situation, and we took it upon ourselves to do a little bit of um, investigating in our own right. Um, 
So we've been out scouting about, uh, a bit of daring do, that kind of thing, trying to find the, uh, the hobgoblins in their lair, and... Well, the sooner we can get back to... to... the mott, and... Well, reveal the information, the better, I think. Oh, that's very interesting. The, um... Blackfell will, will look at you and say, so... You were kidnapped by hobgoblins on Iron Guard land? Indeed. And were, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, you were. And the interesting and now you've scouted out their location. Where are they located at? Who is this guy? Uh, you really don't know. He's just kind of like he's sitting with Krothos, Krothos kind of engaged him. He threw him the bag of money and said, go take care of it. Um, you can kind of assume that he's maybe his, like, envoy or something like that. Um, you know, it's not unusual. Krothos was never a, you know, like a mathematician or a writer. So this guy might be kind of like an accountant slash scribe slash something, you know? Uh, Krothos, um, you know, nothing against your esteemed colleague here, but um, I think that sort of high-level matters of state are best left to the next. He, he looks and he goes, oh, anything you can say to me, you can say to, to Olis here. He's my um, advisor in all things. Um, he's taught me a lot about how to govern and rule. Why do I feel that he's evil? <laughs> He's definitely got some worm tongue vibes going on that I don't care for. Yeah. Uh, should we, shouldn't we uh, actually be going to the capital? Because uh, we are definitely in a rush against time. He's like, no, 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 please stay. You can at least stay for breakfast, but I would say stay for a little while. I'm talking hang out. I'm talking this town is ripe. You know, he's like, he's like, he looks back and like kind of signals to close the door. He's like, this town is ripe for the plundering, man. Everyone's bringing in money left, right, and center. And we can, we tax it and we get money for it. He's like, you know, my father doesn't know about half the money that I'm bringing in over here. And I'm sending back to the capital. He's like, I've got this little nest egg. He's like, it's a beautiful place, man. I need a good, um, person with magic and you know we've got Maza right now but he's insane so I need someone you know with your talents to help me in this area and I think we could just we could make a fortune here Vance and um, I, I I'll, also you're right. try, I'll also chime in right <laughs> after that and he's like yes he's like you should see the numbers he's like Everything that's coming back from the maze, he's like, we're getting artifacts, we're getting all sorts of things. We love the attacks on it. He's like, by the way, you know, I told HHR to to not levy the tax on your deposit. Normally oh. we take we take twenty five percent, but since you're a friend of the family, we, we gave you a little bit of a discount. I certainly appreciate that. Um, I, I think that you are correct. After all, the, the dungeons are a natural resource by your family and the crown. Um, um, it surely makes sense that extraction is, is fairly taxed. But like, um, I, And he looks with like a grand gesture. He's like, I ventured into the Barrowmore myself. I led an expedition. We, Vance, do you mind if I speak to, up for a sec? Oh, by all means. To... Um. Uh, we only lost a few people, and I came back triumphant. Um, I have yet to um, venture back, but I, pl I have plans. Soon enough, I can rid it of its uh, little curses and things. I'm sure my father just wants to play general with these hobgoblins. One last um, ride into glory. and Sir I Krothos, is it? Yes. When, see, when nobility are speaking, you don't interrupt. That's how it goes. I don't know if you, you know. I'm I'm sorry, sir, but this Grothos, is uh, Horus is a member of the order. clergy. He, uh, he certainly merits some some respect. I think. Oh Lord, are you going to be like Othar and blah 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 blah? We need no to no this sir. Nation, and we need to do this and that. Uh, what I do need to say is, 
many people will die. They are planning to take over this entire valley, lay waste to everything in it, including this town, subjugate it under their command, and you won't be the tax maker anymore. Alice You'll be the taxi. Alice, like, kind of laughs in, like, a bluster, kind of like a ha-ha. He's like, those savages? He's like... They have, what, 5,000 5, men, right? 5,000 hobgoblins? And they start, like, laughing. They're we, can, like, we can say 5,000. I like that. Better. They're like, 5,000? Yeah, I'm sure they have 5,000 hobgoblins. What have you guys been drinking? There's not 5,000 hobgoblins in our land. We couldn't even feed 5,000 hobgoblins in this land. Come on. Uh, it's probably close to... Uh, a thousand is a vanguard, though. Uh, Ollie, was it? Um, yes. The well, a thousand advanced forces. Five thousand. Well, as again an, an advanced guard, um, they've been harassing trade, killing adventurers. Um, not two miles from Helix, we were ambushed by uh, ogres and a hill giant who captured two of your small folk. Um, very well see their heads over the horizon. I'm not sure I'm noticed. Uh, things are not all uh, well beer and bacon these days, honestly. I think we may have a real problem here unless we do something. He's like, my father, well, this is Krothos, he goes, my father will end up taking care of this. This isn't if, if anything, if he would let me lead the armies, if he would let me put together some some men, I could call upon my people here. I would vanquish these hobgoblins. They're not a threat to me. Oh, uh, should should we should we just let him? You know, keep thinking that, guys. I um. Listen, um, I I have no doubt that your father's strong arm is more than sufficient to the task, but we've got to get this information to him so he knows where to strike. Uh, the sooner he can put down the threat, the sooner everyone can get back to making money, and we can really pull some wealth out of this place. Um, okay. I think that you're right. There's a huge opportunity here if we don't mismanage it, and I'll pointedly look at Ali. <laughs> so, Ali, uh, look... Might I... Uh, Ali, I'll sorry, look at you... Uh... And he goes, well, if the information is so vital, I have back channels that I can get the information to um, his highness, or my, the lord. Um, if you would give me the information, I will be more than happy to relay it to him very, very quickly. You know, that's funny. You're the second person that's offered, uh, offered to help us out today. Um, I think we need some some fast horses, and uh, we need to get to Mott sooner rather than later. Yeah, uh, I'm just I'm just gonna say, uh, might I also uh, mention they too are scouring the Barrymore. You will be losing money if they are allowed to keep going. Oh, but they are not as well organized as the men, the brave men who go into the moor right now. They will they will perish. They will get in. One day, they will. Their boots will get stuck. They're, 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 they will. They will wet themselves at the sight of the first spider they see. They will run. They are a fearless. They are a fearful lot. Uh, they have no gumption. They have no skill for a fight. And uh, Kratos will go see. I kind of have to agree with Ollie here. Um, I, 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 I think that the the threat, and he puts it in quotes, of hobgoblins. I'm not saying that you guys haven't been through a lot. He's like, I don't want to, to belittle you, Vance. You're my friend, and I just think that, you know, it, it might seem like a bigger threat, um, you know, when you're neck deep in it, but if you take a look at it from a really, like, kingdom macro view, I don't know if this is all that, uh, that much. But I think I can help you with the horses and things like that. I think that that, that I can do. That's not that's oh, splendid. Not, splendid. He looks over. Uh, we, we didn't uh, plan to come here and and rain on your parade. Obviously, I think it's uh, quite the thing you have going here. Um, venture attacks is really something that could take off. Um, really put yourself on the map. I'm certain. He's like uh, Ollie. Can we arrange for them to get some horses? He's like I don't know, sire. Um, he's like 
the right now we're at a shortfall with the horses and you know we did take in a little bit of money this morning but paying to get that uh, he's like let me see what strings i can pull and see if i can make this happen for them um i would really really hate that if we couldn't but you know yeah, times are tough and he's like yeah i know we wouldn't mind tough. donkeys Oh, you wouldn't mind donkeys or maybe Shetland ponies? I might be able to find. For I them. would. I would certainly mind a donkey. Well, I mean, no, for the cart, <laughs> so that we can just ride in yeah. the cart. We have a. Certainly, his uh, the Viscount stables are able to help visiting dignitaries from the west. Um, I'm sure that you can find it in your coffers to help us out. I will. Uh, I, I could definitely take a look and see. Um, what I can do. Ollie's like, you know, anything to help friends of the of the most noble family. Um, I will I will attempt uh, with all of my uh, abilities. And he's saying this as he's like popping like half a sausage in his mouth. <laughs> Different circumstances, a man after my own heart. Oh, I hate him so much. <laughs> I despise him. He's like, what, you know, he's like, you do have to be careful on the roads. There's been all sorts of, you know, you mentioned ogres and giants and things like that. I'm talking, it's been, it's been dangerous. Like I said, you guys have been on the road. Your friend here, and he points over to Rifon, has a, a, a busted limb. You should rest. Maybe you can go and talk to Maza. You know, maybe he can share some of his secrets with you if he doesn't pervert your brain. And they both chuckle at that. Guys, should we just like buy a horse or two? That's what I was thinking. Just, yeah. Yeah, just buy like two horses, attach one to the cart, attach both of them to the cart or something, and just fly out of here in the cart. I think after all that, we get our. You know, my, we, we at least are owed horses after dealing with that ridiculous breakfast, is my thought. Uh yeah, it's just, it's just yeah. Generous. I I was I was going to place the gladius on the table and uh, tell them like, look, this is extremely fine craftsmanship. What do you think their military is like? But the, their imbeciles, they won't listen. I, yeah, these these aren't the guys. What is it? Um, Vance, roll an intelligence check real quick. Oh. Uh... Can you, I hate to say, can you roll for me? I'm trying to get this desk together. <laughs> no problem. Ikea is uh, a little you. I trust you. Oh. How'd I do? Great, I hope. I rolled an uh, 18. What's your intel? Is it 18? Uh, sure, yeah. No, it's 16. Okay. So, no. As evidence by my inability to assemble no. this desk. No, it was, it was very specifically for Vance. Um, uh, uh. So, <clears throat> the... Um, He's like, you know, you you guys should rest here, stay for a little while. He's like, you know, you can help me. Sometimes these uh, these adventurers get a little rowdy, and they don't want to pay their taxes. And then we can just, you know, I, I would have a little bit more authority if I was to have some people around with me that could enforce uh, my policies. Uh, you know, we can certainly take you up on the offer in the future, I think, but uh, between the the letters of credit that we've had to draw on your uh, colleague, Mr. Puffle stuff here, and, and all the rest of it, we really do need to, to uh, jaunt off to the capital at least for a few days to get our affairs in order, I think. Okay, I understand, but definitely come back. You should... Oh, you certainly, certainly. You all yeah. know how to put on a party, that's for sure. That's part of my specialty. It's a party every night in here. And you see Perny walk in at this point, and she's like bringing in some cups of different, you know, stuff. She brings her cold towel and everything. Oh, and perfect, she's, perfect. She's like, and she, you guys can tell she's giving the most like fake performance. Like you've seen her, she's talked to you in a very pragmatic and real way, but she is, um, she's got such a fake persona with with Krothos. She's just like. 
and and my lord, is there anything that I can do for you in order for your stay to be here more pleasant or for your friends? He's like, do any of you gentlemen want to partake in uh, Perny or, you know, one of her ladies? Um, you know, if you want to. I'm talking, it's on the house, right, Perny? And she's like, she pauses for half a second. She's like, but of course, but of course. Uh... Splendid of you to offer, Ms. Ticklebottom. Um, I really think that uh, we ought to keep our strength up uh, quite the ride ahead. Oh, well. Don't, uh, don't want to get saddle sore here in town, am I right? Ha! Uh-huh. Ha! 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 She's like, well, when you get back in town, we'll have one of my girls break you in. Indeed. <laughs> so. And. So, for the most part, that's kind of how breakfast goes. What a start really to the day. An, Really annoying and frustrating. Great. <laughs> so, what we're going to end with is one last, like, little kind of social thing. As you guys are kind of getting ready and, like, kind of putting your card up and stuff and trying to look and get go get horses and stuff like that, um, <laughs> when both... Vance and um, Horace are together. You are approached by Othar of Saint Yig. Ah. You together. Hey, bud. He'll look and he's like, Master Horace. He's like, and he looks over at you and he's like, Are you Vance by chance? The same? Uh, I don't think we've had the pleasure. Uh, this is Othar. He is, uh, head of the church, correct? In, in this area, yes. Ah, uh, well, praise be St. Dig and all that. Uh, top of the morning to you, Father. <laughs> He's like, I have a, a bit of a pressing matter for you. He's like... Seems to be the only kind we, we hear about these days. Has he... Stella run off again? No, he, he's like, she is sleeping kindly in her quarters. He looks over his shoulders like he's trying to make sure no one around is listening. And he's like, listen, I know that Krothos is your friend. Is he not? That's certainly a bosom companion. Came up together at the university for years. He's like, I've known him since he was a child. Mm-hmm. I, have, I was there the day of his birth. I helped with the christening. I am a loyal, loyal member of his family, and his father is a truest friend. I, when he was first assigned here, his father was worried about him. He had always been slightly astray, but his father really wanted him to learn the, the ways of governance and to be a wise leader. And when he started, he wasn't bad. He would listen to my advice, and we would... We had Helix going, and Helix was a fair and a good town. Good people. I knew it. He's like, but he's now has his ear bent by another, and he, I fear that he's being taken down the wrong path. I, I care for the boy. I do. I don't have children of my own. I consider him at least a nephew unto myself. And I do care for him, but he, he in, unless it is dire need, he no longer heeds the advice of me and, and my faith. And the faith of his father. You being a man of faith, could you uh, spare a few days? Maybe... Uh... Come to Iron Guard Mott and explain this to his father? It falls upon deaf ears. I have written letters to his father. His father believes that this is just a, a growing period and that his son will come around. But I fear that the, the apple might have fallen pretty far from the tree. Um, how, how long has his quote-unquote advisor been here? Maybe the last year, year and a half. Hmm. Did he just suddenly appear one day and uh, Krothos took him in without warning? I believe they became drinking and gambling buddies. And slowly over time, he has infiltrated his way into his life and 
into a position here. He's now deputy mayor, I guess would be the, the best way to put it. So he's hopefully not a magic user. That That's good. You know, I really would have thought better of Krothos to, to give such a position of authority to the low is untenable. It's, no good will come up. Uh, should we, uh, <laughs> should we, uh, do, do we, do we have a, do we have a job for Erna? <laughs> uh, Father, I, I, I would say simply that, uh, it's certainly not my place to, though I love Krothos like a brother. To, to intercede between him and his father, but um, I do hope to, through our works here in, in the duchy, to the lives of everyone, um, from the most humblest of bog merchant uh, up to the Viscount himself, um, yeah. reach Iron Guard Mott um, if there is anything that we can do. I hope. You can pass my hey. concerns again on to his father. Um, his father uh, and I are, are, are bonded by great adventure, but we... It, it was a long time ago. He had hoped that his father... or He had hoped desperately that his son would succeed where he failed. Um, but I don't see that happening. He's like... Mm. He makes a little gesture and he's like... May the light of St. Diego guide you. Um, and may you get a you, swift wind at your back. Uh, so you guys have any theories about what's going on? If it's magical or non-magical? They're working All I know is that this is going to be a coup that's going to happen. Oh, yeah. definitely. Well, no, no. It's it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, getting rid of Silver Tongue situation, or Worm Tongue, or whatever. Uh, um, well, would you just run to a Thor or something I, before? I, yeah. I do think we should get on the road before discussing local politics. Oh, yeah. uh, before we before we get on the road, can I buy something spe sp specific? So what I'm going to say, because it's 10 o'clock, we'll go ahead and cut it off. If you guys want to buy things, uh, send it to me in the chat, and then I'll just say yes, no, maybe so, kind of that, that kind of thing. And uh, we'll go from there. So anything you need to buy in town or what y'all are uh, pl planning on doing. I'm going to assume that next game you guys are going to Iron Guard Mott, and that is the theory. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So 200 for tonight uh, for, for XP. Uh, Oh, uh, what is the, uh, level six requirement for a cleric? Uh, I'd have to get my book out. I'd have to get my book out. It should automatically update when you level yeah, it so, up. Yeah, yeah, wait. Doesn't do sheet. that. Hold on, let me take a look. It automatically did it with me. It automatically did it with me. It doesn't do it with me for some reason. Let me take a look. Uh, horse your wood. Character sheet. It did not update. That's weird. You're level five right now, right? Yeah. Huh. Okay, hold on. Let me get my book. It's right here on this uh... Also, uh, guys, do you think it's magically induced to listen to him, or do you think it's just like he's just real charismatic? I think the Thieves Guild has their fingers and all kinds of pies here and is skimming a big oh. old chunk off the top. So Erna, Erna and this guy are buddies uh, with with Toad Mom. There's those ghost beggars. Wait a second. There. I, can, I can interpret the runes and ask. Could. Uh, we got all kinds of stuff. There, there was a field adoption. Uh, 25,000. Yep. 25, I updated your sheet. I think um, one thing, when you go up a level, you need to adjust your hit dice, and I think that's what triggers the, the thing. Not your level, but your hit dice does. I, I didn't do that, and it updated. I just... Oh, I don't know. Update I updated you, so you should be... It, should, it says 25,000 now, so... Uh. 
You should be goad. All right, dooters. Uh, all right. Catch y'all next time. Yeah. See you. Same bad time. Same bad channel. Take it easy, everybody. How much was the XP again? Two hundred, right? Two hundred, please. All right.